Mike Ronald is going to be here any minute, and we're going to talk about this massive solar flare. 2.8, massive solar flare of 2.8. It's the largest solar flare in six years. It happened today at noon. And Mike told us two weeks ago that we're going to be talking about the sun because the sun is going to start being extremely violent, extremely volatile, and that's going to affect us. And he said, oh, yes. I remember him saying that. Oh, yes, it's going to happen. And I said, why, Mike? And he said, well, that binary system that's coming in, and it's going to get bad. Well, here we go. Okay, here we go. And it happened today at about noon. And that means the earth is going to get inundated with a, a powerful CME. Okay, ultraviolet rays, uh, incredible uh, radiation, uh, and, 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 and UV rays. The sun will be hotter. It will scorch. I read the prophecy earlier when we first started the broadcast in the book of Revelation. Then Peter starts to tell you what's going to happen to the earth. It's going to melt with fervent heat. So the process is already beginning now. The earth is starting to feel the pressure. This is why we see all these droughts. This is why we're seeing uh, all these wildfires. This is why we're seeing these great heat waves across the planet. This is also why we're seeing a lot of floods. Mike Ronald World is going to call any moment, folks. We're ready for him when he does. It is going to be um, a very interesting evening. He called this, this, this solar flare, massive, largest solar flare in six years, an X-Class 2.8. Basically, Mike Ronald the World predicted this two weeks ago. He didn't say it like that. He just said the sun is going to do some explosive things, and it's due to planet X, or he said due to the binary system. So we are going to keep our eyes wide open on this. And speaking of Mike from around the world, joining us from somewhere located somewhere around the world, it's Mike from around the world. God bless you, Pastor Paul. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Mike. It's great to have you tonight. Great to have you. Okay, Mike, you said it two weeks ago that we would be talking about the sun and at noon today, uh, X-Class 2.8, massive solar flare, the largest in six years. Mike, is that Planet X? Is, is things getting going to get worse? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I was about two days off, though. That was the date for uh, today's activity was actually marked December 12th. Next episode, December 17th and 18th. And of course, December 23rd, December 25th, or 26th, January 4th, and January uh, 11th, January 21st, or 27th. I guess the real question is, right, how can anybody know what the sun is doing? That's what I want to know. How in the world can you sit there and give me dates like that? So how do you know what the sun is doing before it happens? What's causing that? We have an external influence we do we really do and um that external influence is not it's not going anywhere uh it's gonna uh, cause more and more issues uh, with how the earth operates and everything will begin to um, convey that so mike when you say the external influence and let you know i i keep hollering you know planet x people holler nibiru dwarf star you know planet number nine the, the media has changed its name so many times or the binary system so this influence this 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 huge influence that's even though it might be billions of miles away and it's got a bunch of moons maybe five maybe seven i don't know maybe more but how can it be certain times that certain is there certain pulses like pulsations coming from it that we know about the time they're going to hit the sun based on physics of course celestial mechanics you're dealing with ballooned numbers in a lot of cases but it is in in, in a sense uh, anybody who works with electronics uh, can get a good handle on what's happening our sun whenever it sends out a solar flare right it's actually 
it, it, every time it does this, it will strike the heliosphere in the exact spot of its weakness. Well, that same thing happens within a capacitor. That same thing happens in a circuit. And so you're looking at the perfect balance, right? And so with external influences, you're going to have a weakening of the greater magnetic ball around this uh, solar system, right? And it's going to begin to pull in, in a specific direction. The, the solar flares of the sun will become um, more and more precise as far as a general location they're going to cover. Uh, when, and, and of course, in that power or energy exchange will begin to take place a photonic exchange that will become more prominent. People will begin to, uh, uh, it's going to affect many things on earth, many things. And, you know, they're working at breakneck pace to mitigate uh, certain things because they know what's happening. They know the history. Uh, they know what all the archaeologists have dug up. They know these things. And so they're going to do everything they can do to uh, mitigate certain things we're going to face but they know about but they know about this binary system though right 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 they know about that so what are they going to try and do save themselves right everything they're doing right now is trying to save themselves are you serious just keep you you keep that mindset okay and you begin to see um many things will begin to make sense and they will take away from the general populace or do whatever they have to do uh to, to, to save themselves. Uh, for example, oversight. You don't have a lot of oversight with uh, CERN, right? No. Why? Because it's exploratory science, right? In the quantum area. So who's going to come up there? What, what civilian is going to say, hey, you can't do that because of this, right? There, there are no determinate factors or consequences people can uh, name that are scientifically based and proven that people will face and so there's little to no oversight right uh they're going to continue to do this that's just like some of the chambers they were building they needed to know the precise uh, happenings of our atmosphere and so they replicated uh, you could say the atmospheres of earth in a chamber and this was a mandate they had to know uh what would absolutely take place, how long certain processes would take. I mean, they have it down to a science. Why? Because they know what's coming. We, you know, past Paul, we discussed this, what about uh, 10 years ago, I think it was, and about, um, or somewhere along those lines, yeah, yeah. concerning CERN and what yeah. they were trying to do and how they had to know about the atmosphere because conditions of the earth are changing. Right now, for example, right now, do you know that, uh, a severe drought has struck. They're, they're not telling the numbers. These um, meteorologists who work are given, uh, they, they have certain things they cannot discuss. They can't talk about them. And right now the water levels are disappearing all over the place, although we have, you know, rain and snow. But the water levels are leaving and salt water is starting to take its toll, right? Starting to come in where right. other water did exist. That's going to be real bad this summer, um, extremely bad this summer, right? So people are going to have uh, water problems. Do you think they're going to talk about that to anybody? No, right? No. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised about five, uh, I say about five years ago. We're, now, this is just my observation. Normally, when the Lord impresses things upon people, it's always about five years before something happens. Not going to almost guarantee five years ago, people were wondering and having dreams and uh, intuitions about water, something with the water, and that they were pressed to make sure that they have water, right? And I know I, it's, it's just that because we're running into a time now where water is going to become uh, one of those commodities that are highly regulated, right? Right. It will be. And, uh, the, 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 something's going to happen to the water that is bound. Something's going to happen to the water. We live in a, uh, society now where terrorists are running all over the place, but there are different types of terrorists, right? Something's going to happen to the basic uh, things that we utilize, unfortunately, right? It's just naive to think that nothing is going to happen Not like that. It will. And, um, <clears throat> people are going to have to face that. Now, hopefully, Everybody did their homework according to what uh, the Lord gave them an unction towards uh, concerning water. 
so that they can continue to uh, get water even in uh, troubled times. You know, when you bring up the water and the saltwater intrusion, you know, these are things you have talked about probably for about 10 years. We did a webinar where you actually showed us a map of what the Earth, what yeah. America could kind of look like. And, uh, and that's a, a map that went back all the way into the, the Navy in the 1960s, but it's been, it's been altered some to, to when you brought out a really good one. Um, you've talked about intrusion. You've talked about, you know, the binary system, the, the volatility of the sun. We've talked about droughts that are going to be unbelievable, yet we're going to have massive flooded rains and, and rain bombs. And then, so is all of these things, and, and, you know, they're biblical scripture that backs it, but are all of these things, they're not, they're not, a, there's no way to stop them is what I'm hearing. There's no way to really no. stop it. No, it's part of a part of a process we're going to have to undergo, um, and that's just the beginning portions of it. The rest is, uh, you know, a complete. Can you imagine humidity all over the planet at about ten percent? That's right? crazy. That's... We, we we also live in a time where all these uh, mysteries. They're not going to be mysteries, Pastor Paul. They're not all these like UFO topics, aliens, um, secret machines and this that and the other all that's coming out into the open they're not going to care to show anybody this stuff because everybody's mindset is changing right everybody, right and it, you know i have to put some of this on sir and i do because they're tampering with what people would call dimensions right now yeah. don't put things in perfect balance anybody who studies uh, physics or electronics uh they're on the engineering side they understand that everything is in perfect balance right if you go pull something out of a demonic realm is it, then something else is going to have to fill that void you can't empty out anything god balanced and if anything comes out of this realm going into that demonic realm something is coming back to this realm every time they run these experiments kind of like that powerpoint that um, uh, i gave you a long time ago yep it will begin to change human behavior and what have we seen since yeah. that time right right it's been a time darkness spreading in the minds of so many people it's almost people are are uh, they are nuts people are nuts <laughs> and they can't see they, they cannot see that they're not sober right they can't see that so it's a it's a dark influence in the earth right now it's about to get a lot worse because the this inbound thing this binary star is not coming by itself and we're not talking about forces of physics right uh, some of the language when people discuss spiritual things, but a lot of people, a lot of novices have tried to look into it, become experts, but they haven't come from that side of existence, right? And so a lot of people think they know uh, about the spiritual realm and this, that, and the other, but in, in, in the quantum area, you start to learn a lot about this other realm, these what they call dimensions. I would call it part of the bubble and I, and I reference the bubble because something is wrapped around this planet right right that is very difficult for uh let's just say it's a spiritual bubble and it's almost like we're surrounded by demonic entities and evil influence all around us and and outside of that who knows what that is but we certainly have a dimension that they're pulling things from we're talking about energy that could fit in a sugar cube right that could power a city this is what they're pulling out that's crazy i know you brought that up before i mean yeah yeah well reports are going to come out now that the, the, one of the major things is anti-gravity yeah you know, okay. that's coming out the reports are coming out the proof of concept is coming out the prototype machines are going to be shown we're talking about real anti-gravity right not okay. magnetism not that stuff but what they're really tampering with past ball is utilizing all this material that's wrapped around us they found out how to reorder it right let's just put it that way mm. so in essence when you live every day of your life uh we see we see fish swim we're doing the same thing right we just don't recognize the fluid around us okay we learned how to utilize that fluid, okay right 
So that's, I see the concept. I see it. So yeah, they've learned how to utilize it, and this fluid is everywhere. But is it plasma? Everywhere. Now, are you talking dark matter, or are you talking no, it, plasma? This is, this is more in line with, our, I wouldn't call it dark matter. I know they called it that at one point. Well, I guess for the sake of conversation. Antimatter. Antimatter. You could call it dark matter, or or let's just say matter that's in, an, in the spiritual realm. Okay. Right. So that spiritual realm means a realm we can't see. Right. right. So these guys are tampering with some real. Uh, I think that people at the Pentagon call it voodoo. That's what they call it voodoo. Um, they call it voodoo. Someone, what would, uh, yeah, they uh, call it voodoo at the Pentagon. And what, is Voodoo's, it because it's something they can't they can't deal with, or is it because it's scary to them or spooky or what? Oh well, yeah, it's it's spooky. Uh, it is spooky, and that's one of the descriptive words in that too, right? But they do, they call it voodoo, voodoo stuff, is what okay. they call it. Okay. But because it's, you can't really explain it, you know, with the things that we're used to. So they have, they're utilizing this. This is why this UFO stuff is coming out. Well, one reason why. Um, but they're not going to hide this stuff because they're going to start utilizing it. Why? Because the earth is changing very fast. Right, it's changing right. fast. And I think that as things begin to progress, you're going to see people make power plays, right? You're going to see folks, uh, countries make power plays. It seems like no country respects other countries in this day and age. Mm. Why? Because those governments know, they, they know things they haven't discussed with everybody, right? right. If, if they can't release, for example, they can't release uh, certain classified things in one country and not expect everybody else to know it because we have the internet. Right. So it has to be a, a international co-op type release. And believe me, that's coming. All right. And when it comes, we're gonna be under, uh, well, let's just say under uh, a, a, a new type of lifestyle for everybody, you know, um, because these things will be exposed. And when you take something out of the realm of fantasy and you tell someone it's real, your, your brain's not going to want to believe it, number one. You could see things right before your eyes, and your brain would still not believe it, right? But when you see it every day, that's when it sinks in, and you're, having to, you're going to have to deal with things. People are going to have to deal with things they normally wouldn't deal with. And during this time, press ball, this is why all the financial systems and everything else, they're set up to change. Because they know this time, this time of duress is coming. Yeah. And they're doing everything they can do, though. Uh, to save themselves from that ultimate time, they know it's right around the corner. So they know it's around. The so corner. they know, and you know it's. It, and folks, and by the way, when you talk about this, they're trying to save themselves from what they know is coming, because they can see it. They've got deep space probes. I mean, they got this thing. They've got it figured out. The Bible told us that this exact same thing that they see coming is going to happen. So. The, the, a reason you're saying that's a reason for a new world order, for a one world government, for a new banking system, a new digital uh, economic system, uh, a, 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 a higher class, a ruling class, and then a, a slave class, a mentality, all of it to gather resources. Let me ask you a question because we got today from one of our sources, it's um, an insider who's been right every time. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable. This individual sent us a uh, info today to say, hey, look, you need to know, and you can run it by Mike, China attacked an abandoned US base in Alaska. They thought the base was abandoned. Apparently we have troops there hidden or underground or whatever. And so they're involved in a Shots fired, an altercation between Chinese and American troops in an abandoned military outpost or base in Alaska. Is there anything, Mike, that you can say about that or anything that you know? Well, Pastor, there's been a lot of incursions uh, lately. Okay. A lot. And uh, it's, it's only a matter of time before certain hostilities beyond political speech and talk uh, kind of spill over into the public's eye. Now with this, with, with if that incident is real, because I can't, I can't say anything about that. All right, uh, I get you. Right. Because something like that would, you know, that would be used for leverage. That would be used for propaganda. That would be used for a, a million things. So 
Um, but keep in mind those things, just like that, they happen more often than anyone knows. And this is just in the last year. It's been happening like that okay. more than anybody knows. Okay. And what I'm saying is you could be in a town. For example, you could be in a town and possibly you notice <clears throat> a police chase with armored vehicles you never saw before, but you'll never pay attention to who they're chasing. Right. Um, those things have happened already. Everybody knows those balloons came right over the USA. Exactly. Everybody knows that. So even before, why did they, they didn't send those balloons because somehow their GPS was messed up. That's a GPS guided system. Right, right. right. That's a GPS guy. That was part of something else. Well, let me ask you, before you say it, and, and real quick, and that is, would they have ever told us about it had this photographer in Montana hadn't spotted it? They'd never told us, would they? Well, there would have been, what, 12 more. Oh, see? 12 more. 12 more. So, yeah, so, if, so if we, so if some, as you said, the internet, if so, if some of us out here hear something, see something, spot something, yep. They may have to tell us something that they weren't going to look just like this con this this right. uh, this confrontation in Alaska. Right. It That's may right. they may in the next two three days have to say something since I'm talking about it tonight. Yeah, they will. They they will have to because once once the people find out about things, right? They're going to start to press the government for some type of answer, especially if it's military. And so they normally stay out ahead of it. So don't be shocked. If they, they come out and say, you know, something is all lies, right? right? Sadly enough, the majority of people still believe in mainstream media. And so they will get out ahead of it or call it something else quickly. Or who knows, for the, if they're angry uh, at China enough, uh, they may come out with the part of the truth. I, I doubt if they'll come out with the whole truth. Yeah. Okay. But those things, basketball, they're happening more often now. Okay. They're not. And, and, and I'm talking about the USA and China and the Koreas, right? The Koreas. Huh? The Koreas. The Koreas. Koreas. The, Koreas. The, the Koreas. And uh, Australia has a bit of an issue, too. And so does Indonesia, uh, the Philippines. So, so okay. Are, who they, Indonesia, are they have? Are they having? Indonesia. Okay, that sounds like all of those people are having a problem with China, though, as from what I understand it. It's a reordering. It's, it's a what? Reordering is going to take place. Everything is going to be reordered, right? There, there are alliances linking up right now, right? Yeah. Now, they only needed some sort of a trigger, some common cause to get behind to solidify some of these alliances. And that happens to be Israel. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Israel just for a minute, okay? I mean, we got two things. The UN just had a big vote. Um, thank God the Security Council voted one veto by the United States, but the General Assembly went ahead and voted anyway. It's non-binding, and they voted 153 to 17, uh, with 26 abstaining, to forcibly demand and stop uh, and cause a Gaza ceasefire. Um, and then a, a Turkish lawmaker stood up in front of the Turkish parliament and criticized and cursed Israel and then finally made the statement, his last words of his life, Israel will suffer the wrath of Allah. He then instantly fell over and died of a heart attack. He died today. He had it, and this happened the day before. So, What's going on here with the UN? Is there pressure building against Israel, even besides the just not just the UN, but I mean, is it coming from everywhere now? The entire world right now, right, is highly sympathetic to um, to Gazan people, right? Right. Palestinians, they're 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 highly sensitive, so they they are in the process of forcing Israel. They have to, they always make known their position first, publicly, right? Now, people are going to talk about that. It's what will happen. Based on the feedback of those conversations, they will go forward. Even, even uh, the American administration will change its views if the people are, are, are in support 
of Israel being stopped by force, right? So we all know what's happening. There are more people out there who, it's not that they, they've taken a strange stance because of prosecution of, of people who were outspoken against Israel, right? Kind of stopped a lot of people from speaking their minds. But we all know that people are, they're, they're tired of, they call it senseless, fighting and when they have these stories where they show israel you know utilizing phosphorus or israel stripping soldiers this that and the other yeah they see it they see those as you know grievous hostilities and they're not going to go for that and so they made this public in a couple of days uh they're going to reconvene and have more talks about this pastor they will disarm israel yes i heard you ultimately disarm israel and this is it's not going to take a long time either no it, it may seem like that right now but it will not take a long time and when this happens that's when the usa is going to have we're going to have to be on on severe watch because if we take a position with the world we're going to seem weak right yes we already vetoed uh, the un but that's that's not going to work because you have nato uh heads of nato saying that uh, you know israel has to stop Right. Right. So we, we, we know in the Bible that um, God will plead with everybody down there. Right. Yes. There's a part in the Bible where it says God pleads. Yes. With fire, brimstone. Right. Yes. With great hail. That's how he pleads. It's starting to overlap. Right? These things are starting to overlap. And there's some very real uh, there's a very real threat coming our way. And we're I've, not going to miss it. And it's not going to destroy the earth. No. But it, it's going to cause some conditions nobody is used to. Right? Nobody. I mean, we're talking a meteor storm is most certainly coming. And, to, and here's something new. Not only is one meteor storm uh, coming, but another one is coming right behind that one. So the secondary storm is about, it's about a, what they say, about a, about a five-year gap in between these storms right so who knows who's going to make it through this so, second storm so we're we're in, a, we're in a danger zone now let's talk about these meteorites because it's 2025 i mean this, we're going to have this meteor storm we're already seeing more and more and more and more asteroids going by so what happens when we get in when is this going to happen is this 2024 2025 26 well what do you see there's no no we're looking at a uh you're actually looking at a situation past where dates are not going to do people any good Here, here's here's what's here's what will here's what's going to happen okay right? okay we're going to have some example incursions that tear up some stuff right uh i i wouldn't say a large loss of life but there will be a loss of life and from that point on people are going to want answers but here's what's going to happen. As soon as the first set or the first cluster uh, breaches the atmosphere and actually makes landfall and, and it, you know, fall in the ocean and land, you're going to have a billion experts out there who never discussed this topic. They're going to hop on every media <laughs> platform and confuse the people. Oh, wow. Now, here's what it means. The source, because nobody's discussing this, right? They're going to jump in there and take the lead and everybody's going to listen to them. But that's where they're going to make their mistake. And so anybody who can cover the subject now, not to so much speak about uh, the theoretical sides of things, but to get people ready for the reality, right, of living in a time where this has actually happened. Because we've talked about how a lot of people are well informed about many different scenarios, right? But what about when it actually impacts them what? Right. right. Then what does a person do? What does a person do for their family in a in an environment where a few have hit and the atmosphere is changed? It hits a couple chemical plants. You have fires that won't go out, right? Uh, sea levels start to alter, swish and squash and all this, that, and the other. So people need to know this. Certain things are already prepared for that and we're just talking about some impacts right because when the i'll say it again the first examples are coming they're, they're coming right we, and so we know they're going to cause uh, volcanism we know they're going to cause fires 
Uh, this summer, we're going to deal with a lot of fires, things of that nature, right? So are the people well informed of how to still function? It, a world that's not going to, it's not going to end because a few of those hit, but it's going to scare people. It's going to, it's going to change how they view the world. It's going to make some people uncomfortable, right? Then what? Do they have enough uh, 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 spiritual strength to stay rooted, to actually be of help to somebody else? Are they ready to face whatever it takes or, or whatever comes and still maintain their status, uh, their, their, their state of faith in Christ? Or will they just fall apart, start listening to everybody else and be maneuvered into this new utopia everybody is starting to set up? Wow. I mean, you're right. And so we have this uh, a total shift of everything because of survival <laughs> because of the elitist group or the ruling class is trying to come up with a way to survive the apocalypse they know it's coming they can scientifically see it we can spiritually see it uh but they don't understand the source behind it all am i right i mean christ right they, the, the, you know that's right they have physical details, right? Things that'll happen physically. I mean, they paid all the archeologists to dig up all this stuff. They're the ones that determine what people can uh, read and what they can't read, right? They're responsible for what is distributed around the world and what is not. But uh, again, when the first examples hit this earth, then what? Right. And we're in a new we're in a new area there, and we know that people will uh, a lot of people will say, "Well, I need to go hear an expert in this." Sadly enough, that's when it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. All right, uh, all right. I guess we're back. Um, let's see, coming back. Yeah, we're back. This yep. is I've never yep. seen this. Hey, I shut a computer off. <laughs> you, you you know when you no. shut it it's still on i mean when we're back they're saying we're back so we're, we're back okay so <laughs> mike is that even possible i shut heidi shut it manually down the entire computer goes off that means whatever programs you're running that's over it's over but no well, evidently not. I guess not. Well, anyway, Mike, where were where were we when we got uh, thrown under the under the bus? Well, uh, I think we were talking about the necessity of uh, covering the top. Okay. Of uh, living in that or, or or occupying in that environment where uh, these incursions uh, begin to happen. Have we, we talked about the sun, of course, losing its hydrogen and then the photons being sucked out of it at a certain point. People are asking about the three days of darkness, which did happen in the days of, of uh, Moses in Egypt. That's not, I don't know if that could even happen. Uh, can you help us on that? Well, you know what, there, there's a, uh, I had a dream in, in before any of this, before Council of Time, before any of this stuff passed ball. Okay. And I found myself in, in, in darkness, right? Uh, I mean, it was dark. It was super dark. And <clears throat> I heard people saying, ask Mike, how long is this going to last? And a voice spoke to me and said, 30 and seven days, right? Here, here's the funny part. Before any of that happened, before I was in the, this blackness, this darkness, I, I heard a trumpet. But here's the odd part. This trumpet penetrated down in my bones and everything else. Now, this was before I had the... I had this uh, level of heart for Christ. Okay. This is before any of that. Okay. Right? Yeah. And people, I, I can never understand why people were asking me to tell them when when the darkness would go away, right? But they did ask, and and a and a voice told me to tell them thirty and seven days. Thirty seven days. People were scared, but it was absolute darkness i mean it was absolute darkness so concerning three days of darkness i have no idea but concerning the 30 and seven days i have that one reference that really disturbed me right i i, I won't go into it to i told a couple of people about this about 15 years ago right and i even used a name that nobody used the name that people use now to refer to me 
I told them before I ever spoke to you, Pascal, and you gave that name. Remember that? I know. That's that's wild. That's why. Well, you saw those, me. Those people know that. They know that. They know. Oh. They know that. And um, so there we are with that one. Now, can that can that literally take place? Sure, can because with a in a binary system, there comes a point when the colder star begins to exchange power or energy with you know the star you can see and there's a photonic exchange and it begins to essentially refuel itself from the bright star they have observed this right yes. so all the light is redirected to that uh, to the colder star because the colder star has much more mass is very dense and it starts to pull all that energy towards it in fact many solar flares will come off our sun going straight to this smaller sun in that time period though there's no light reaching the earth because all the photons are redirected we do we will have infrared heat right yeah but we will not have it in the visible light spectrum that we can see we won't have light so they have observed that and it is uh, you know best if we if we are in a binary system which i do 100 percent believe uh, we're going to have that we're going to have that issue and it, and it will last you know it's not three days that's going to last for a good month or so that's a process that normally will last uh, based on the orbits of those two stars about a month or so and here's the part of timing if that star was far out there right now right the closer it gets to our sun the faster it's going to double its speed so if somebody ever observed which they have observed something out there say 20 years ago right and they had a timetable of 100 years then five years after that the timetable is going to be 50 years hmm. and then two years after that the timetable is going to be you know 20 years and it's going to keep you know getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until they devote a laser range finders um to actually see how close this thing is right that would take a dedicated system to do that a transmission system of great magnitude that's the only way you can tell uh absolute acceleration of a, a star like that you have to have something close to a communication system and guess what we have a brand new one we have a brand new one we do that that has oh yes we have a massive communication transmission system that goes right out in the space now nobody has radios out there that requires you know that much energy to be beamed out into space we're talking about we're talking about power higher than the power CERN generates well why would we be why are we sending radio waves or signal uh -huh. because that's the only way you know what the, the, some of these mysteries in the world all people have to do is look back at some of the patents that were filed back in the 70s and 80s right snag those patents and that will tell you about the technology being used today and when you look at some of the tech today it will tell you about what's in certain places and it's a perfect match but most importantly it will allow you to know what they're doing with it right wow It'll make a powerful transmission system that can only transmit into space because if they transmit it on the ground it would fry everything on the surface of the earth they can't do that it's going right out in space and it's cooled by the ice right in the poles that's how it's cooled by wow. the ice in the poles which by the way is melting at an alarming rate this machine is melting that ice every time they use it and it it goes off about probably uh i think it's uh twice a minute it sends out a burst twice a minute now the reception of it is being received in west virginia one of the biggest satellites in the world is right in west virginia hmm. that's why they never speak of west virginia too much it is a reception <laughs> hub right see. one of the most technically advanced uh receivers is right there in fact there are a few secrets in west virginia but that's where it is there's another place in in, in new mexico uh arecibo of course and there's another place in Colorado and one in Canada. And so they use these to receive anything that's been pulsed out like that, right? When they receive it, then they can tell the absolute distance and acceleration and other properties of stars, 
right? Stars are so bright sometimes, they're so different as far as their power. It takes uh, different methods and techniques just to get the physics of that star, you know, accurately. Because they have to know exactly when this thing is going to impact the forces of Earth. But we're already seeing those impacts. Yeah. Right? That's why uh, solar flares can be predictable, right? And I, I think now it's not a it's not a complete science, but I think so far there are people keeping count. I believe we've done this at least 30, 40 times, uh, the correct date on the solar flares and CMEs and things like that. So it, it's not too bad of a system, you know, to see that. Um, well, no, I mean, you... You, you hear you predictable because of this other body out there. Yeah, I mean, you just predicted that the event we had today at noon. You were predicting the other one, and the other, and the one, other one, the other yeah. one. So and they could, you know, they could be off a little bit, but they're yeah. generally uh, right on the money. Yeah, yeah, the last yeah. one was right on the money. This one was a couple of days off. So yeah, there we are. So, so within two, three days of you know a day or so or whatever, the, the, these predictions of what the some massive uh, explosion of solar activity on the sun is now being predicted. You're telling us in advance it's happening. This is quite extraordinary. This means we do have a way, ability to gauge it, and it also proves that we know why it's happening. Yep. We, you know, even if the public's not going to get an announcement, not tomorrow morning, they're not going to go on you know, CNN and announced everybody that we know about this binary system. It's right. starting to shake up the universe. It's going to blow up the sun or the sun's going to go crazy. It's going to affect the earth with all kinds of traumatic storms. And, 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 and no, we're not going to get that. They're not going to be, they're not going to say that, but obviously, you know, as you're saying here, we know we can see and they're preparing. That's why there's underground. Let me ask you how many nations of the world, have underground cities in preparation for the apocalypse. Well, China has a few. Okay. Uh, Russia certainly has theirs. They always prepare for the people. I know they're a communist country, but they they want to preserve Mother Russia, so they always have their uh, people informed. Uh, Europe has theirs. In the U.S. Of course, we have we have a lot. Uh, Germany, of course, they have a lot. Europe. Uh, South Korea, they have a, a few. Uh, so there, it, it's not a new concept. It's a very old concept, and and be to be to be a little more open. In a lot of cases, it was uh, Germany and India who shared with the world that there were underground cities. Right? Okay. They haven't really told everybody about the underground cities that are five thousand years old. Right? Cities that old. It, by the way, they keep time. So they're very old cities. And we're talking about cavernous systems. For example, in Fort Hood, Texas, there's an underground place that will blow your mind. I really? It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. I mean, is it part of the military <laughs> there at Fort Hood? It'll blow your mind. And the entry, nobody's going to accidentally get into these places. Okay. In Nebraska, right? In Nebraska, uh, in Arkansas, places like that, you'd be surprised how many cornfields can open up. What? They can really open up. Yeah, there are giant doors in those places. They can open up. Right in the middle of a cornfield? In Germany. Even Saddam Hussein had that. Saddam Hussein had a mile, a mile wide door that would open up and shut in the desert. Right? So we have those two, but they're, they're obscured by fields that you can actually drive over, but they can open up. Um, so we have quite a few places like that over here, right? I'm sure that people have seen the videos of truck drivers driving in underground places where they have, you know, yep. pretty strong security and um, the weird symbols they show. I'm sure that um, if people heard uh, two governors, they talked about the underground transit system that travels at the same speed that an aircraft does. Right, aircraft travel at about five hundred miles. I mean, that's unbelievable. Oh, and they leaked that out. That was that was at the beginning of the year, right? They leaked that out, and I got nervous. But I heard it. I could because somebody somebody said, "Hey, Mike, listen to this. Listen to what?" And so I'm hearing them talking, and they were sitting there talking about it, right? like sort of like oh, bullet. They're almost like bullet trains underground, but 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 uh, at the speed of you know well, five hundred, six hundred miles an hour. They told everything, right? It's, think of a the thing of a, a pod, kind of like what people call okay. a tic tac. Yep, yep. yep. In, a, in a vacuum chamber. Yep. Let's put a slide. 
right, in a vacuum chamber. And so uh, just like that. But they were talking about this openly, saying that they're going to put new linkage into this state and that state. I couldn't believe it. But I never heard it again. I heard it that one time. Never heard it again. Never heard it again. So anyway, yeah, they have transit systems and they have that. Why? Because even in the Bible, it says they're going to go hide in the dens of the, uh, of Amen. the, the caves and the mountains and dens of the rocks because they're going to save themselves. That's right. They know what's coming. They dug up all the proof. Right, they have every archaeological um, archaeological find out there. They paid the people to go get this stuff. The governments did. They have all the findings. They have all the brightest students that ever was. They recruit from MIT, and, you know, PA, and all yep. these different places, UCLA. They they do this continually, so people can yep. back engineer things. Right? They're in a fight right now in, in Congress and the Senate uh, to put the information out there to people, and then the other side says no because they can't make enough money off of it yet, or something like that. So once it all comes out. It's going to be a not so interesting topic. Why? Because it's going to, they're going to be in full of 